The local press outside uh, told me uh, that Charlie Flanagan is in total control of politics around here. <laughs> and, I, and they would like some woman to stand up against him. But that's what they told me, and that's hot off the press, Charlie, outside the door, that you're in total control and somebody has to stand up and challenge you. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great privilege to be here. I have covered the plains of uh, Port Leash for the radio. I've covered uh, silage and thrashing and cutting and reaping with the great farmers, which I suppose is real politics, is the politics of people's lives. Um, um, I, 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 I'm interested as to why I was asked, because I don't necessarily uh, write for any paper, but I do work in the world of, of radio, which is the, uh, the aural theatre of our world and of our lives, and I spend most of my time doing what I suppose people do all the time, telling stories, uh, and as I say, the stories of our entrances and our exits. Um, and the last time I was here in this theatre, I was with a theatre company called Northern Broadsides, and they were a Shakespeare theatre company from Yorkshire, and we did two plays, The Merry Wives of Windsor. In The Merry Wives of Windsor, I played a whispering, overweight um, housekeeper, which I still am, haven't changed a bit. And in, the, um, in King John, I played Constance, who was uh, very political insofar as that she was trying to hold on to her throne. And the first line of the play is, of what news from abroad? So it brings me right back to um, what uh, the media is, news. Um, the second thing I'd like to say that as a senator, I don't, uh, I, my first time around um, what they call Paul Core political correspondence, I didn't really understand what that meant. But also, the Senate is not, does, is not necessarily considered that political. I'm not anyway, insofar as I got a, I, I was gifted by Enda, and I'm somewhat outside politics. But on the Pat Kenny show, and with Miles Dongan here, and with Sean O'Rourke, I've had the privilege of being kind of a journeywoman, and running around the country and talking to embalmers, and fishermen, and sewermen, and bikers, and post office workers. And so, but Vincent Brown said to me, you're not to do that when you become a senator. You don't be doing that and running around the country like a journeywoman. Or organise yourself, you know, and in the Senate. But in actual fact, he was wrong because it was absolute politics. Because I learned so much from all the people I met. Because their lives, what they did with their lives, how they lived their lives, why they lived their lives, when they lived their lives, what their, their agriculture or living in the sewer, working in the sewers or working for the post office or working as fly fishermen or working as chiropodists. You learn so much about people's feet. And through people getting their feet done, they'll tell you, lots about their lives and the way their lives had worked and the way politics is our lives. So I don't separate that out. That's the first thing, that politics is our lives and how we live our lives. But when you come to the media, the question has to be asked, how do you hold back the tide of media? You can't because everybody has a media message from Twitter and my Facebook and news and forums and formula and social media and internet and tablets and iPhones and iPads and YouTubes and personal computers and sites. So where do you begin and where do you stop? And it has become what Postman called technopoly. You know, the technology of politics, technopoly, extraordinary. So it's very hard to know where to begin in the argument and where to end. And everybody has a media message, and here's mine. Everybody, every child has a media message. Every young person has a media message. Everybody has a media message. And we are mediating ourselves to death in one way. And there's a, a, the great kind of um, plug-in has become, you know, the Moses tablet has become the great the great plug-in turned Apple. Um, uh, so th that's a major question. How do you hold back the tide of media? I don't know. I don't know. And how do you separate it? I don't know. Would we miss the press if it was taken from us, you know, for a week? Would we miss it? I'd have to say maybe no. And the reason I might say that is the other day I picked up this book, The Gathering, it's Reflections of Ireland. It was done for the Hospice Foundation, and it's out on the 1st of October. And it is a magic book of writers and poets. I think it's one of the last things Seamus Heaney wrote before his death. In this book about a linking back and a linking forward <coughs> and lives and people's ideas and poetry and stories and experiences, and linking a bridge back, I suppose, as well as a bridge forward. And I learnt as much, and I say that with all the respect for our writers here, I learnt as much in the book as I might have learnt in three weeks 
you know, in reading everything that were thrown at by the press. That's the first thing. Um, does uh, the political press undermine more than it reports? I sometimes feel that the press feeds an undermining of things as opposed to, I hate the word positivity, but in, as opposed to um, a more magic, found, a majestic foundation of things. Sometimes I feel it lacks analysis that um, reporting and commentary analysis all gets rolled into one, and the immediacy of the action dictates the immediacy of the pen, and we don't get enough analysis. And it's not just through the lens of the paper. There is a huge other lens out there as a big audience, that sometimes we don't ask who is the audience, and that sometimes political memory, outside some of the politicians and some of the great political writers here, um, the, the political memory is lost in young writers that they don't, they don't contextualise what they're saying and there's not enough history um, c coming with, with the way what they're saying and what they're writing and, and what they're concluding, that it's a very scant history. And as I say, the political memory is lost. Um, are politicians too close to the media? I don't know, because the Senate never gets covered unless um, Senator Fergal, or Senator David Norris starts talking about people's fannies. And then, <laughs> then there's a, a wonderful run at that. Um, John Drennan, to be fair, was the only one when I was stalking the corridors talking about the lottery and the selling of the lottery licence, which is the greatest um, tr um, transfer of our own personal charity money to swag men from um, Nevada, uh, we're selling our lottery license, and he, he only wanted to pick it up. You know, so I have, I have a great belief in, in if, if, you've the, if you're a good story and a great writer, you're away. Um, uh, I think sometimes I would have to say there's a herd instinct. I don't like the word, but there is. The vilification of Enda Kenny, um, the most maligned, whether, he, whether I knew him or I didn't. Same thing to Cowan, as um, John has pointed out. He has become, Cowan is now the satanic paradise lost. Um, Enda Kenny was the most maligned um, leader of an opposition, and he became Taoiseach despite um, what was said about him. He was, they, it ended up, a writer said that he was a cut above smallpox. Now that's very hard to take. Um, so uh, I, 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 that was something that I, I think that is not balanced um, against, uh, against the lionising of um, uh, the, Bertie Ahern. But then people say, oh, you would say that, you're forgetting again. No, I wouldn't. They're human beings. No, I wouldn't. So that's really all um, I, want, I want to leave you with the thought that I think that um, we have too much information, far too much information, and, um, and with less meaning. And we don't need any more information. We need more questions. I think our chair said that earlier. We need more, greater and deeper analysis of how, why, where, and when. It's not lack of information has half the world starving. And it's not lack of information has half the world isolated and disenfranchised. And it's not lack of information that has filthied our water and polluted the planet. That's not lack of information. Um, we have too much information, we have not enough action, and our information has become saturated and meaningless, because if it wasn't, we'd have done something about those things. So, thank you. Thank you.